Now then, it's another day and we're in autumn and we have this Qualcast electric mower. I'm sure they're all generic really. Anyway, we've been using it or I've been using it for quite some time. It came out of the scrapyard. There wasn't that much wrong with it. Bits of wire and switches and bolts and stuff like that. But um, a few days ago, whilst it was dry, I was mowing an area and it suddenly slowed down. Um, so instead of forcing it along, which would create more trouble, I stopped, unplugged it, and the rotor feels quite tight. So um, it's time, I think, a bearing's tightened up. And rather than force it through and then have it spin in the plastic housing, then I'm going to do something about it now and then it can get put away for winter and it's ready for the spring. So let's flip it over and take the, um, take the blade off first. So here we go. And as you see, it moves a bit and then it's quite tight. And I suspect a bearing. This is 12 mil. And last time I had this apart, I did actually grease this bolt. Yeah. You put things together with a bit of grease, they come apart again. Modern mechanics don't seem to do that. So as you can see, or you probably can't, let's zoom in. Focus. There's an offset key on the blade itself and there's a big pin and a small pin, not at 90 degrees. And I have in the past seen these sort of things where the blade has been put upside down. And then of course the cutting action is with the back of the, um, the blade. And it eventually either burns the motor out or burns the wiring out. Because it's drawing more current obviously. So now we have to get to this lot which I'm not sure. Looks like there's a screw there for a start and another one there and one here so I'll get the, uh, uh, the the wire brush to that and just clean those up These impacts are absolutely brilliant for that sort of thing where you've got screws that have been there for a long time and rust and whatnot it just frees them off you can't beat it right let's have this top off there are one two three
Well, that's amazing. Yeah. You don't realise how awkward those screws can be. Right, we've got lots of fluff and nonsense there. And it looks like this again. Let me show you this. Here we go. Yeah, there's the motor, there's the rotor shaft. So it's another one of these ones where it's a belt drive with uh, a lay shaft and I'm assuming it's the bottom bearing so I'm just going to take this downstairs and blow all of that lot off and hopefully this whole assembly will lift out I'll have a look in there there might be some more screws but I'll get back to you shortly <coughs> okay I've blown that out and I think we need to zoom in again. There's a screw boss there. There's still a screw in there. There, 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 there. But from experience, I do know that there's probably one here somewhere. So we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six. All from underneath where the horrible grunginess is so we've undone four yeah ah there's another one here that I missed and there should be one more up the front somewhere And there it is down there. Right, so we'll undo those extra two and withdraw all the screws. Now, will we be able to undo this one? No. Well, that one undoes. And it seems like all the screws are the same size. There we go. But we've got this one here. So let me dig into that one. flick all the muck out the head. Luckily that slipping didn't damage anything. There we go. Got to press to keep everything together. Okay, I think we've got all the screws out now. Yes. I said yes because look, that just pushes out. So let's turn this upside the right way up and lift that out. And that is tight. Okay, so I, do you know what? I think it's the motor bearings that are. Let me just zoom in on that. Okay, I was just trying to spin that to get the 
the belt off and can you see the motor bearings are not spinning the motor is not spinning at all so we need to flick this belt off somehow on that other uh, mower that I did there was an actual bearing here in the plastic case but on this one there isn't so this is overhung from the bearings behind there which might be a good idea because they then don't have a bearing right where the wet is but the um, the motor seized up so let's just see if I can get this belt off it's coming off Right, there's the belt, which is a multi V belt, tooth belt. Right, those bearings are not very good. In fact, there's some sort of shock absorber arrangement there, by the feel of it. But that motor has stopped. What I'm going to do get a pair of mole grips on that and just see if I can wiggle it that really did seize up quite solid that's amazing so we'll have to have that motor apart and it looks like there are four screws there and there. So let's have those screws apart then. And these are different, they're dome headed. No, they're not, they're, they're exactly the same. These ones are clean. which is great they're all the same size and then remove the wires if I can that looks like it's got a clip that holds it in place and the clip gets to from that side so you can't get to it got to get to it from the underside to get to that clip which is about par for the course there we go okay let's get a bit brutal with this moving it was a bit strange that it just locked up see there's no bluing on any of these windings so it just sort of locked up the bearings are obviously dry but you know it wasn't like it had been left for a week and then it didn't start it was running perfectly and just went Eep. now this is going to be a bit of a problem but I mean we could just soak some oil down there to try and get some oil into that bearing but how do you get to the bearing on the bottom of the motor and I'm just looking here 
this is probably beyond the scope of this video but we shall see let's just zoom in on this motor and hopefully no there just in there can you see those splines so that drive pulley is splined onto that shaft which means that we've got to pull that off to get to the bottom bearing yeah and how tight is that on there yeah. there's no key or anything so it's obviously pressed on there we can but try So if I've got to get that pulley off, we're going to have to use the press because you won't get a puller in there. And I'm typical. And I'm thinking this bit of steel just goes behind that pulley there. So if I was to drill a hole and then cut a slot then this could push on there and then I can press on the end of the shaft let me just zoom in on that there we go and if it's a little bit tight then I always can always grind a little bit off the face but I'm making a jig basically to go in the press to be able to press that pulley off that shaft and then I can get to the bottom bearing I was hoping this was going to be a lot simpler fix but it's proving not to be but it's a challenge isn't it so I'll come back to you when I've made that jig or that pressed plate or whatever you want to call it so as you can see I drilled a 9.5 mil hole there and then used the very thin one mil thick or whatever they are cutting discs on the four and a half inch angle grinder to cut those and that will really hold that solid and we've got a center in the end of that shaft it's a matter of going to the press having a little short very short shaft um, perhaps a little point on the end or something like that but it's pouring rain at the moment and the press is under the solar panels outside so that's going to wait for another day right we're at the press See what happens. Absolutely nothing. This is bendy. Yeah. Okay. got a piece of box section here inch box section that's spacing things out so I'm going to move that across the back here to give it extra support Way, here we go to give it extra support there we go bit fiddly put that back in so that's all rock now go on back up there you you devil we need a little bit of extra box section that side here we go there's another bit there a 
that will support that. Okay. Now we'll have to think of something different. Right. So as I say, those four screws are undone. So this whole back assembly, there we go. So that bearing's all right. I can just about get to that bearing down there. Can you see that bearing there? I wonder if we can just hook that seal out and uh, uh, put some oil in there on grease. Right. This is just where you see the back of my hand all the time. We just need something just to get in there. Just leave it with me a minute. It's obviously far too fiddly to film. There, I've raised that seal up with a screwdriver. And... Um, I'm going to poke some oil and grease down in there and work that backwards and forwards. It doesn't look too rusty in there. You can just see a little bit of melted plastic there where the bearing had just started to spin in the housing but not sufficient for it to come loose so I think I'm just going to chop that bit of plastic away I think we may have just saved this motor I'll keep working that and uh, put a bit more oil in it and then later on put some grease in it tip the oil out and put some grease in but yeah it was worth stopping when I first noticed the problem rather than trying to carry on and then this would have been a write off So let's poke some grease in there, if we can. Not the easiest thing to do. and then press the grease seal down pop it down in there 
there we go it just popped in and that should well we know it's well lubed now so it'll just um, free up a bit more as soon as we start using it and whilst we're here we might as well pop the seal out of this bearing here I've already put a bit of uh, oil on it let's just see if we can without stabbing myself there we go we just poke a little bit of grease in there and then pop the seal back in right we can put all this lot back together now whoopee right well that's going back together I just had to use the screwdriver down there and down there just to get the brushes past the bearing and the commutator and then there's these four screws to go back in there and as Jeff says from Elderly Iron start them all before you tighten any just tighten those up and check that the bearing check, check that everything spins right it's a little bit not totally free but I'm sure that will bed in once we've got it um, working there's no areas of tightness and of course you've got the brushes that are holding it back as well so there we go let's put the whole thing back together so that goes in there like that and this is slightly loose because it's got a shock absorber in there just in there in those slots there are some springs obviously it's a bit worn but I don't think we'll investigate that so we just need to and these are in slots which is great which means that the belt is adjustable but you would never most people would never get that far I'm not going to tighten this all the way up right slide that all the way over there that goes on there on if we can push that down there we go and then we can tighten that belt up right what are we going to lever against because obviously it does need tightening up there we go there 
Perfect. Nice and tight. Good. Grand. We have now got the assembly working. And I'm just going to pop a bit of oil on these screws. Because why not? One more screw, where was it? Ah, it was down there. It was at the front there. Stay. Just right down. And I can't get to it. Will we stay on the driver? Yes, we will. Perfect. So those are the screws on there, whilst we're here, we need to put the blade on. That's the cutting edge, so cutting edge down. There's the bolt, which is already greased. Twelve mil, wasn't it? And then we just got to put the top on. Tuck that in there like that. In fact, it went in that little clip there. There we go. Put the top on and give it a road test. I'm just going to pop a bit of oil in the top of that bear in there, and hopefully that will soak all the way through and get to the bottom bearing as well. I suppose really I should have taken that other assembly apart but it seemed free enough and um, it looked like loads of hassle to have it apart. It's a bit windy but let's just give it a road test. We're just looking out for the blue smoke dragon and any sort of hot winding smell. Compact. Only time will tell, but it looks all right. Hopefully you've um, found this useful and enjoyed this video. I will catch up with you soon. Cheers for now.